Welcome to another Watercolor Wednesday. We are here with my watercolor journal and we are going to paint some more expressive flowers and let's get started. By the way, we're also on Periscope while we're doing this, so you may hear me answering questions that you can't see. That would be because I'm answering comments on Periscope. All right, let's go. My palette's already wet because I already did one page today, but we're going to get it a little bit more wet. And we're going to wet the paint that's in the lid here, which you on Periscope can't see. But just this is my whole palette. This is the one I usually use for demo pur purposes for when I'm filming. And I've got my color key very close by. All right, let's go. I'm going to start with this really big brush because for the first layer of background color, I just want um, something really soft. I'm at, and I'm actually going to, let's, let's do a wash of water over the page. Let's just get the whole page wet. Hello, everybody. All right. So there we go. Now we're going to go in with a sap green. And I need to get my plate because I have no more room in my lid to mix, mix it with. It. So there we go. So we're going to put it here on my porcelain plate. I use porcelain paint palettes because they are easier to clean than plastic. Um, the paint, whether it's water or watercolor or acrylic, comes right off. So, all right. So I want something that's really faint and watery. And the paint is going to bleed and blend with the water that's already on the page, which is what we want. And then I'm going to rinse my brush off. And I'm going to just go back in here with some clean water. And I'm also going to lift a little bit with my rag. I like that. I'm also going to take something sharp-ish. This is um, knitting. This is a double-pointed knitting needle. I don't use it for that because I don't really knit anymore. And I'm going to put some lines in the paper, wet paper. There we go. And then I'm going to go back in here with a little bit more paint. And it's going to kind of stay in the lines. Make your lines go, go every which way. Again, we just had this discussion with the um, sunset seascape. Um, nature's not straight and perfect and even, so don't have your paintings of nature be straight and perfect and even. They'll be more natural if they're more suggestive and, you know, crazy lines. I'm going to go in here with a little bit of my sap green and on my palette. I'm adding some more paint to what I had over here to make it a little bit darker. There we go. I like that. All right. Before we do anything else, we want to dry this because I don't want the next color we're going to put on here to blend with the green and make brown. Mm -mm, it's not what we want. By the way, this is the time if you want to ask questions, it's a good time to ask them. Okay, now we're going to use the same large brush and the opposite side of our palette here. I'm going to put in some purple. I'm 
and uh, water. And a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of quidocrito rose. Because I want to warm it up a little bit, but not too much. And that actually tiny bit, and that wasn't much, is actually, I think, too much. So let's bring back some of the blue and that purple. There we go. That's a better color. I like that color better. All right. So now we are going to... And you're just, right now, you're just doing blobs. This is just about the blobs. Just do blobs. Then I'm going to go in with some water. And I'm going to soften some of said blobs. Now this is a um, Princeton Neptune brush. And it's synthetic squirrel. It holds a lot of water. So I have to remember when I do this to like blot it off a little bit on my rag because it actually sometimes gives me too much water. And we don't necessarily need to soften up all the lines, you just want to soften up some of them. Okay, I like that. I'm going to come in here with a little bit of lemon yellow. Not too much. And be careful about where you put it. Because the yellow will mix with the purple and you're going to end up with brown. But I want to hint at some sunlight before we get too far into this with anything else. I am going to pull up some of this yellow because I think that might be a little too dark. I want like a faint hint of yellow. Not a wham, there's yellow in your face. <laughs> That's better. No whams, yellow in your face. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with a little bit of this blue that's in my lid that we had left over from the seascape and a couple other projects. And I'm gonna put some of it in here too a little bit. Always when you're, I'm working on paintings, whether I'm doing watercolor or acrylic, I always get my backgrounds done first and completed before I work on the focal images, and that way I don't have to go back and try to touch up the background around the focal image, which drives me crazy to try to get in and around things. Okay, that's pretty good. I like that. So let's give it a dry because what we do next, we don't necessarily want to have blend with this. And again, on Periscope, this is the time if you want to ask me questions, it's a good time for that. So now we're going to go to a small brush. Hey Eileen, what am I doing? I'm trying to read who asked that, and I can't read who asked that, but I am um, we're doing, working in my watercolor journal. So I'm going to go in with a smaller brush, and this is a Princeton Select round number four. This is my art apron. <laughs> I think I understand what you uh, mean, Eileen. You keep popping in and out. It's okay, no worries. Okay, so now the fr we're doing flowers. So the f now we're gonna go in with some of our watercolor paint. I'm not gonna water it down like I did before. And I'm going to paint in some stems. I 
I'm just using the tip of my brush. I am not pushing down very hard. green paint. Okay, not too much though because we don't want it too runny. All right. Now you can go into some of these with a or medium size round brush and you can just like blur some of the lines. So it's not all even and perfect. also go in here with some more of the green paint and a larger brush. Put some paint down and then go just in with water. I want it to sort of blur and be drippy. I'm just using sap green. I'm not using any other green paints right now and I'm just using it with different amounts of water. So the more water, the lighter the color is gonna be. Now think about your color palette and what colors on the palette are warm or cool colors. So those cool colors lend themselves really nicely to um, indicating or suggesting shade, right? One of the cooler, the cooler colors on the palette would be your blues, your darker greens, your blue greens, your violets. Um, for this painting, I think I'm going to try using Prussian blue. And we're going to just put a little bit, the paint down here is still wet. There's plenty of water down here. And again, I'm not really touching the brush to the paper very, um, I, I'm barely touching the paper. And my Prussian blue paint is not very wet. It's, it's um, kind of on the dry side, which is cool. That's kind of what I want. This is just plain water and I'm going to lift. We're not supposed to call it blotting, we're supposed to call it lifting. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Yep. Okay. So now, 
we're going to go in with our um, violet color and I'm going to let this dry a little bit without hitting it with the heat tool because we're going to work up here a little bit and that's another way when you're working on any painting to kind of let things dry without artificially drying them and you know just move to a different section of the painting when that other part dries. So now we're going to go in with our violet and I'm going to try going in, my brush is damp but it's not very wet. And I'm going to go in first with this bigger one and then probably with the smaller one. I'm going to start with this purple that's on my mixing tray, but I think it might be too light. Yeah, that's too light. So let's add some more paint to it. And let's make it darker. And this is dry up here, so where I put the paint, it's going to stay unless I in introduce water. I'm just touching the tip of my brush to the paper. I'm letting the tip of my brush make an interesting mark. Then I'm going in here back with a damp brush. Try not to stick my arm in things I should be stuck into. And it's damp, it's got a little water on it, and I'm just touching it to a few spots so that they will blend and mix, or blur, bloom, whatever you want to call it. Something like that. Okay, let's keep going. Let's do that again. So we're just touching. And don't make them all the same size. Don't make them all the same shape. You might want to, while it's wet, stick some um, a warmer color in there. Like you could stick a little bit of, this is the Quinn Rose. And if you do it while it's wet, it's gonna blend with the purple and just make it a little warmer in some spots. And just let the tip of the brush make an interesting mark for you. You shouldn't have to work too hard at it. It should just do it. And this kind of painting is a good painting to just play with and experiment with your brushes and what they will do, what you can do with them and what you can't do with them. That's how you learn, you play. I'm gonna let that one dry just a second while I do this down here. If you work quickly, you can probably do a few of them. Again, rinsing off the water. What sizes are they? The brushes, you mean? Be more specific about what sizes. I'm glad you're going to try it. I want you to experiment and play. All the brushes. Okay, so this is a Princeton Neptune round number 12. So it's a kind of a large round brush. Um, I also have the, um, also a Princeton brush, it's a Princeton Select, and it's a smaller round number four, that's this one. I like Princeton brushes because they are synthetic um, animal hair, they're not real animal hair. And then my huge one is a Princeton Neptune, um, this is not called a round, this is I think a bright Number eight, this is a gigantic brush. This is a round number 12. This is, I think, a bright. And then the flat one I have is a Royal Lang Nickel flat, one inch flat, which is this one that I have. But I have a lot of brushes. Those are just the ones I've decided to use today. <laughs> You're welcome. I like the Princeton Neptune brushes. They're not super cheap, um, but they are a good brush. 
Um, Royal Langnickel is very inexpensive. I have a lot of their brushes and um, I've gotten a lot of them on clearance at Michael's or Hobby Lobby and they're a nice brush. I have no complaints with the brushes of theirs that I have. So whatever fits your budget. Um, I also, we have here in California, some areas I guess of the US, I guess it's not everywhere, we have a store called Aaron Brothers Art Marts, Arts and Framing. They are owned by Michaels and they have um, frequently uh, brush, well art supply sales, really great ones where they will have um, like buy one brush get two free, buy one canvas get two free. So I wait for sales like that and then I go stock up on things that I need. too much purple. Except that I think that was a happy accident because I like the way it looked. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So I was inspired by this picture to do this painting by some pictures I saw on Pinterest of lavender and lavender type flowers. They didn't look exactly like this, but I thought they were interesting. And we have lavender in our front yard. And I like painting flowers. I don't know what it is about just painting flowers. They're fun to paint. And there's less, um, I think, stress with painting flowers than there is painting a face. I'm just touching the tip again. Using different varying shades of my purple paint. Yeah, painting flowers is fun. Everyone loves flowers, don't they? You're texting upside down. No, I can't believe that. I, I have trouble texting right side up, Eileen. <laughs> it's honestly. some of that because I think that's a lot of paint right there. If you guys are friends with me on Facebook or you have my email address, you'll have to tell me later if you uh, like um, me doing these um, periscopes while I'm filming for YouTube and if you're on YouTube you're gonna have to tell me if you have any questions comments or concerns about me doing these while I'm on periscope if you'd like to know how to find me on periscope or any of those things most social media things if you just just search for my name everything's under my name when I first started doing art, I couldn't decide on a business name, so I just used my name. <laughs> I think now it's become a happy accident that I did. Okay, I really like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's an uneven number, so that's interesting. But what I think I need to do is it needs a pop. Um, it's a really pretty painting, but it needs a pop. So I'm going to go in with a damp brush and some... Azo Yellow Deep. And I'm not going to put a lot. Don't freak out. But just a little bit. Now when you're doing this, you know, the sun's right here. We put our yellow right here, right? So you want to make sure all your highlights are on the flowers where they would be hit by the sun. Because that's what this is. So don't, you know, don't put highlights on the back side. You know, put all of them on one side and then one flower put it on the wrong side. Don't do that. But see how that little bit of this yellowy orange, it just gave it a pop, right? I love that. I do think I want to do some down here though too. Somewhere. Just, yeah.
see how pretty is that quick easy fun making art and art journaling should be fun it shouldn't be a chore something you dread oh, I love that yes 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 that's pretty all right so now this is a mixed media journal right so let's see let's see let's see Oh, background stamps. Let's find a background stamp. And then I have an idea for the splatters. I think you guys are going to really love this. I think I want to use that, that script stamp again. Where did it go? Because I do like this script. Who doesn't love a basic script stamp? I mean, really. And we're going to use um, sepia. First, we're going to dry this. Okay, first let's do some stamping. Okay. And then we're going to take some of our, let's see, let's get our biggest, bigger, but one of our bigger brushes. And we're going to take um, the Azo Yellow Deep, which is an orangey yellow color, see? And I'm going to grab some water, which my water is getting kind of dirty. And I'm going to put a little bit of vermilion in it, which is a darker orange. It's really strong, see? That actually got more orange than I wanted it to, so we're going to take some more of that Azo Yellow. So now we're going to do this. And don't freak out, don't freak out. If you get too much of somewhere that you don't want, you know you're not going to get it all up, but just blot it a little bit. And remember that the watercolor dries lighter. I love that. I love the messy color. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I hope you guys do too. It was quick, it was fun, it was easy. It would be really great on a greeting card. I could see doing a greeting card or a postcard in this. So I hope you guys have fun with that. Don't forget to go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Do some painting, have some fun, and experiment, all right? All right, I'll see you later. Bye.